Hello world, today I will be reviewing the Grand Budapest Hotel made by none other than the fantastic Wes Anderson. With a budget of 25 million, this movie went on to make 173 million dollars at the box office and it also gained nine Academy Award nominations with four wins in the below the line categories. But why was this movie so successful? Well, let's dive into it today. Wes Anderson is definitely a filmmaker with a very distinctive style, so much so that if you google a list of modern day auteurs, his name pops up right under the likes of Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese. And I mean for good reason. His movies always have this indescribable Wes Anderson feel to them that is just so distinctly unique that it really makes him hit or miss at times where if you like his style you do and if you don't you don't. And I've got to be honest here, I wouldn't even consider myself a Wes Anderson fan. I mean, I've seen The Life Aquatic, Rushmore, The Royal Tenenbaums, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and now this. But I think part of the reason why I was so attracted to continue watching his movies is that that style of his is just so appealing. I mean, his movies are always gorgeous with the most interesting framing you've ever seen and the soundtracks always match up. But I think for the same reasons that I'm not a huge fan of Miyazaki's movies is that there's sort of a childlike quality to them that I don't really have a great affinity for. But regardless of that, I mean, this movie is just brilliant. And I absolutely love the humor in this movie, which surprised me because usually Wes Anderson's humor can fall flat for me a lot of the times, but this movie made me laugh multiple times. I can't say I'm alone here in saying that the Grand Budapest Hotel is absolutely a fun movie. I mean, to start, the story is absolutely outrageous. I'm, I'm not gonna spoil anything here, but the entire movie is basically a story within a story within a story within the movie. And Wes Anderson's outrageous style is so perfect here. Once again, like in the Royal Tenenbaums, he tells this story like a novel, but at the same time utilizes different tools inside of his toolbox to create this magical world that could only be achieved in a movie, and dare I say it could only be achieved by Wes Anderson. I mean, the way that he blends animation and miniatures and stop motion in this movie is just so seamless sometimes doing all three in one frame, and I find it to be just intoxicating because you would think that blending these different types of elements with live action may be a bit jarring or a bit unrealistic looking because most of the time when things like these are used, they are used to achieve a sort of realism. Like in the first Blade Runner, they actually use miniature models to shoot the whole city. But Wes Anderson doesn't really go for a sort of hyper-realism vibe here, he just kind of lets it go the way it is. And as much as you may think it will take you out of the movie, it's actually quite entrancing. It really has the opposite effect. I'd say that the unrealistic looking parts of this movie actually just absolutely add to the pure stylistic qualities that this movie has. And of course, one of the reasons I think that I love this movie so much again is because of the fantastic cast. I mean, we have just wonderful comedic performances here all across the board. I mean, when he introduced some of the characters, I just literally screamed because I could not believe what I was seeing. I mean, when Jeff Goldblum entered the frame, and then Saoirse Ronan, and Willem Dafoe? I freaking screamed! But even with Wes Anderson's more frequent collaborators like Willem Dafoe, who wouldn't be really such a surprising find in a Wes Anderson movie, it's still exciting to watch because Wes Anderson introduces all of these characters in such an interesting way. I mean, seriously, freaking Willem Dafoe in this movie reminds me of like a comedic version of Anton Chigurh. But I think that one of the things that I love about this movie that I really got behind more than maybe some of Wes Anderson's other movies is that in the beginning, in all of the playfulness and excitement that this movie brings you, it is really serving a commentary in a lot of ways of how people treat each other. I mean, we can just see with the family fighting over the will like in Knives Out, but how no one showed up to the lady's funeral, or how the police treat the other main character on the train. And I took these things very seriously, of course, because of that scene in the beginning where the author is telling us that the things that he's writing are not coming from his imagination, they are real scenarios that he's just rewritten from the world. And I find this movie to be so interesting in that way. And also Wes Anderson once again just manages to deal in some pretty heavy or dark subject matters at times, but he presents them in a very childlike friendly way. 
And he seems to do this all the time in his movies, which is a very interesting skill, but overall I've just got to say that The Grand Budapest Hotel is a wonderful movie. It's magical, it's fun, it's brilliant. You can watch it with the whole family. Well, maybe not because there are some dirty jokes. But yeah, it's, it's a fun movie whether you are a Anderson fan or not. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe for more. I actually might watch Moonrise Kingdom or something because I haven't done that yet, so if you'd like to see a video on that, comment down below or something. And yes, I can't wait to see The French Dispatch. But other than that, I do have Letterboxd if you guys are interested in seeing what else I'm watching, and you could talk to me more directly if you want to follow me there. So overall, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.